Good morning. It's so good to see each and every one of you as we gather together once again for another online Bible study. I'm excited to continue on with our series that uh, we have been focused on as we begin looking here and continue to look at uh, the idea of countercultural Christianity, reclaiming right thinking in a world that has gone wrong. Now, today we're going to begin with a word of prayer, and then we're going to get into our study time together, a very important series of lessons that will probably go on from this week into next week, and very, very critical uh, uh, opportunity for us to really gauge what's happening and to take a snapshot of what's occurring in our culture and how we might respond. So let's pray. Uh, Dear Father God, we thank you again for this day. We thank you for the opportunity we have to honor you, to serve you, to praise you. And I pray that you would just lead and guide and direct us as we go through this week, as we go through this day, and as we seek to honor you with our words and our actions. I pray, Father God, that uh, we would guard our hearts and guard our minds as we continue to focus upon you and your work. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people say, amen. Well, today we're going to talk about uh, countercultural Christianity and the slippery slope. And it's interesting because what we understand is that the idea of a slippery slope is the idea that the decisions that we make ultimately have consequences. And these consequences, when we begin making these decisions and begin going down a slippery slope, these consequences progress from bad to worse. It's interesting, as we begin looking at the history, even in the last 15, 16 years, in the last 20 years, of how we've seen that slippery slope take place even in our own society. I remember that there was a book that was written, it's called Marriage Under Fire, and it was written by James Dobson, and it was written back in 2004. I remember getting that book, and and as I picked it up, I I counted July 2004 was when I bought it and began reading it. And I knew that there was a great battle that was going on in 2004, and James Dobson began identifying it. He began identifying this attack that was taking place on the fundamental framework of traditional marriage. And what he began to explain in this little book, and it's a very simple book to read, he began to explain what would happen in the days, in the weeks, in the years ahead What would happen if we went down the slippery slope of allowing traditional marriage between a man and a woman to be redefined in our society, to be redefined in man's eyes, to be redefined by government and by politics? And he began to lay out what would take place. And he said that it would be ultimately a domino effect. A domino effect of disaster would take place if traditional marriage was redefined. Now, What he said was that ultimately, if traditional marriage was redefined, that there would be an erosion, an erosion of traditional marriage that would ultimately lead to an erosion of traditional family values. He also said that with this erosion of traditional marriage would come the redefinition of sexuality. He said that with the erosion of traditional marriage, that there would become a redefinition of morality. With the erosion of traditional marriage, there would come a redefinition of discernment and even direction for the church and even for the country. Now, what's interesting is he wrote all of that in 2004, and he made the plea that Christians in those days and churches in in those days in 2004 needed to stand for what was right when it came to traditional marriage. Because if not, then everything would begin to unravel and unroll and we would begin going down the slippery slope. Now we come to 2021, and everything that he warned us about actually began to take place and has taken place in that time frame. So here it is, it's a matter of 17 years later, and that's it. And we've seen all of those things take place in a little under two decades. Now, what does this really tell us? Well, it tells us that we are in a battle as Christians. We are in a battle that we don't always like to talk about. We don't always like to recognize. And that battle is a spiritual battle. And it's a a warfare that we are going through in our culture and in the time in which we are living. And that what's happening is that this battle, this, this battle that's taking place is striving to redefine 
truth. It is striving to redefine the way we see the word of God and the way we see the nature of our faith. In 2020, the American Worldview Inventory, it announced that there was growing skepticism now in the culture in which we live about the Bible, especially among young people, the millennials, even in some of the nation's largest Christian denominations. Stunningly, when comparing the current data with that from 2000, which was almost 20 years, there had been a 21 percentage point decline in the proportion of adults who believe the Bible is the word of God. Otherwise, in 2020, 75% of adults believe that the Bible was the word of God. Today, 54% of adults believe the Bible is the word of God. 58% in 2020 believe the Bible was without error. Today, only about 40, 41% believe the Bible is without error. Now, what does this tell us? Well, it tells us that as we move farther away from the word of God in our culture, as we move farther away from the word of God, even within churches. And I, I know that you may not believe that that is taking place, but it has taken place over the last two decades. We have seen churches go farther and farther away from the word of God in the name of pragmatism and political correctness. Now, we'll come back to that here in a few minutes. But in Ephesians 6, 10 through 13, the apostle Paul kind of summed it up for us. And he said that when you find yourself in a spiritual battle, in spiritual warfare, then this is how you are to respond. And this is what he says. Finally, be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Now, as we look at this, we know that as Christians, the way for us to respond to this spiritual battle we find ourselves in is to arm ourselves with the armor of God. Now, I've done lessons before on the armor of God, and so I don't want to go into all the details of that. You can go to some of the previous lessons and learn more about that. But I do want you to begin thinking about what does it mean to arm yourself with truth, to arm yourself with the promise that comes with the Word of God, to arm yourself with discernment and direction in a world that is lacking discernment and very much lacking direction. Now, what we see happening today is that there is a methodical attack upon honesty, upon character, upon morals and integrity. And that war is being waged upon the soul of mankind. And so it's even happening in many churches. We see today that there is a growing number of people that are now identifying themselves as post-Christian. That means they were once Christian before, but they are no longer. Nearly 38% of adults in the culture today in our country are post-Christian, meaning I once went to church, but I no longer go to church. I once professed to be a follower of Christ, but now I am just spiritual. And that's what we see happening. And so here's what I want you to begin examining with me over the next couple of weeks. I want you to begin seeing the race that we are in when it comes to this battle. We are to win this race, and we are to do so by arming the next generation with truth, with morals, with honor, with integrity. Now, the race that we are in is this. We are facing this today in our culture. Number one, we are facing a culture that's striving to remove the Word of God. That's the R. We are living in a culture that is striving to attack the Word of God. That's the A. We are living in a culture that is striving to corrupt the Word of God. That's the C. We are... Strive, or we are living in a culture that is enthralling Christians with alternatives to the Word of God. Now, that's the E, to enthrall the Christians with alternatives to the Word of God. And so what I want you to do first is I want you to look with me for a moment at the culture that is striving to remove the Word of God. Now, what we see is that, that in our culture, if you were to compare the church to the New Testament church— then you would see that the church today among Protestants is drastically different than the New Testament model. 
that was ultimately put in place upon Peter's great message, evangelistic message on the day of Pentecost. And what we are seeing is a rise in number of churches that are actually becoming more pragmatic in nature rather than being Christ-centered in nature. So instead of being Christ-centered when it comes to the message, when it comes to the witness, when it comes to programs and methodology, instead they have decided that what's important for the church, especially as we see a declining number of Christians in the country, a declining number of attendants in church across the country, then churches are asking themselves, how do they survive? And instead of taking a stand on the word of God, many are becoming pragmatic. Otherwise, they're becoming politically correct. They're striving to grow in numbers instead of sending out missionaries. Now, we see that this has happened in different denominations. And we see right now that there are several denominations, one in particular that is virtually splitting and on the, the verge of maybe even being completely dismantled in the weeks and the months and the years ahead because they have strived to be pragmatic when they needed to be biblical. In Colossians 2.8, it says, See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and by empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. In Colossians, Paul warns us, Whatever you do, don't allow yourself as a Christian and don't allow yourself as a church to go down the path of political correctness and the path of pragmatism. Now, what is pragmatism? Well, pragmatism is when the value or the worth of something is determined by the practical value and not based on its actual value. And what does that mean? Well, in a church, that is when a church decides to grow in numbers, so they begin approving of things that are accepted by the culture, even though those things may be rejected by the Word of God. And so a church, they may want to reach out to the culture around them, so they decide to be more like the culture instead of being more like the Word of God. Now, you remember what Romans 12 says, right? When it says, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world any longer, but instead be transformed and be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you might know what is the good, the perfect, the pleasing will of God. And so a church that goes down the path of pragmatism will ultimately go down a dangerous path. Because when you go down the path of pragmatism, it ultimately begins leading to the annihilation of of the truth of the gospel. Because what will happen is man will want to ultimately begin pursuing a man-made version of the gospel and not the authentic truth of the gospel as found through Christ alone. In Romans 2 verse 8, it says, but for those who are self-seeking and do not obey truth, but obey unrighteousness, there will be wrath and fury. In 2 Thessalonians 2.10, it says, And with all wicked deception for those who are perishing, because they refuse to love the truth, and so be saved. And so the only thing that ultimately is a result of a church choosing to be more pragmatic than biblical is that of destruction. Destruction ultimately for the church and destruction for the people that they're leading within that church. And so let us make it our effort let us make it our commitment to be men and women of God, men and women of great faith in the time in which we are living, men and women that stand for the faith as a church and as individuals. In Hebrews eleven six, it tells us this, without faith, it is impossible to please God. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Let us please God by being faithful today. Let us stand for the truth and share the truth in a world that desperately needs to hear the truth. If you would, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and bow your heads with me. We're going to close out with a word of prayer, and then we're going to continue on with this lesson next week. So make sure you join me, and make sure you invite your friends and others to join me next week as well as we continue on with the race that we find ourselves in in the time in which our culture our culture seems to be unraveling out of the seams. Let's pray. Dear Father God, we thank you again for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your truth and your love. We thank you for your blessings. And I pray that today, that today that you would just guard our hearts and our minds with your word and with your promises. 
that we would rest upon you as the great provider of all things, that we would rest upon you as the one who is our great encourager, the one who is our source of strength, and that we would forever honor you, that we would forever honor you with our words and our actions. May we share your truth with the world around us forever and always. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people say, amen. God bless each and every one of you until we see each other again. I can't wait to see you next week as we gather together one more time for another online Bible study to look at counterculture Christianity and how we might stand for the truth and defend the truth. God bless you until we see each other again.